Now let's introduce the players. In the top middle position as the orange Protoss, we have Cruncher. In the bottom left hand position as the green Terran, we have EG Thorzan. If this map is shattered, then how did the island all of a sudden come joined with the, <laughs> with the main part of the map? Because in Lost Temple, there were islands. And all of a sudden, things got shattered and everything got reunited. If Lost really Temple was weird, lost, man. why does everybody know it's in the middle of the map? Oh, that's also a good point. This is uh, very mind-bending stuff, but look at this. Cruncher sending a very early scout. Nine pylon. Now, again, if you nine pylon scout, usually it's for Nexus first. Otherwise, you pretty much get no real information unless you unless it's like a four-player map like Taldor Mall. There's something really huge where you need to get that information. Uh, but Cruncher is scouting again very early. He's going to find that his opponent is cross spawns. He doesn't know that it's forced cross spawns on NASL Shattered Temple. Which is quite unfortunate. Saves him, or it would have saved him a lot of time. And Cruncher will get into here. Oh. He does put down the gateway. I think it's just Cruncher's style to always scout fast. I've seen him do that in every single one of his games. Oh, but enough. I agree. Um, normally, when you nine scout, the 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 thought process is, why would you ever want to scout that early? What benefit does that do? The probe gets in here, and if you did a thirteen scout or a twelve scout, um, you find out the same information. You see the barracks. You know, this barracks is still being constructed. Uh, and then you see the refinery. So it's kind of weird to, to do that. And normally when you um, you do 9 scout, you go for a fast nexus. And the main reason is you're looking for any potential incoming pressure. Uh, but yeah. Cruncher is just going <laughs> to gas steal yet again. Gas steal again. And uh, Thorzane, I don't think he minds that whatsoever. He's getting his first marine now and probably will drop the reactor momentarily just again. And yeah, there it is. So, Thorzane, I mean, he's known to go for two racks in general just to be safer in TVP. We can see Cruncher is going very standard as well. Nothing really too out of the ordinary. No early second gas, as we've, as we've been seeing a lot of out of Korean Protosses. Um, getting that second gas really indicative. Oh, yep. just kidding. He's getting second gas. Really well. It might be a mind game, though. He did cut mm. probe. Yeah. production for a second there. It could I be. I think that was the, the, he took his gas at his opponents as well, so he had to cut that. Yeah. Um, ton of Chrono Boost being saved up as well, so we could see uh, like an in-base four, four gate, I think. Um, yeah, it looks like that, something hmm. like that. Well, uh, we'll see. I mean, Thorzane does keep track of that, uh, of the gas count. Whoa, look at this. Thorzane is placing a factory off to the side. And so, again, we were talking earlier about game number two, making the exterior seem exactly the same to your opponent. A lot did the same to Cats. Now, Thorzane to Cruncher, you can see that uh, the, the reactor, I think, is in sight. Yeah, it's in sight of that assimilator, but he doesn't see the factory. So this is a fantastic decision here just to really mask what he's truly doing to Cruncher. Exactly. Chrono boosts are additional, uh, additionally spent on that cybernetics core, so the warp gate is getting that fuel. Uh, oh. I do want to mention that he had a probe out there to make it look like it was going to be some sort of expansion. Look at that. He puts a pile on there, too. Hmm. And it is four gate inside the opponent's base. Wow. And Thorzane doesn't see this. This is so unfortunate. Yeah, this could be really powerful. Actually, <laughs> it will be very powerful. This is a dream scenario. I mean, this is exactly what every Protoss dreams of happening. Uh, as they're not able to pay attention. Oh, actually, it gets spotted out really quickly. Oh, uh, yeah, very nice job there by Thorzane finally catching sight of it, saying, ah, oh, something's not right. And now he finally sees it, and that's going to be bad news as Warpgate is just about to finish. And with 10 seconds on the Warpgate transition, it's not going to be enough. Nope. Um, yeah, there's. I don't think there's any way for him to get all the units out in time because it needs a good four or five seconds for them to warp in. Yes. So unfortunate. And here we have, oh man, he hasn't had uh, another pylon actually started up. Oh, yikes. So, so this yeah. is going to yeah. be even more time that he has to wait. And a bunker is going to be placed. I love the positioning of this bunker, by the way. Not at the very top, but a little bit further back. Exactly. Not what to the side of the... Because if stalkers, stalkers want to actually attack on this ramp, it forces them to actually move command up, which gives you a couple more shots rather than having a nice surround on the bottom. Yeah. Which uh, sounds kind of weird, but... No, it is. no, it's good because you want to protect the ramp ultimately, so that way uh, you the stalkers have to hug the side and ultimately put themselves in danger. We see a robotics facility. Looks like Cruncher's playing PvP kind of style, going for direct <laughs> for a robo straight after the four gate. Nothing really of, uh, of actual consequence with this Hellion, but Thorzane just got a really cheap scout with a uh, with 100 minerals. Now he's going to get his Banshee up, although uh, 
Uh, I don't think Cruncher really has any opportunity to pressure, so he's just going to fall back. And I, I guess go straight for a Colossus, but I now guess a 1-1-1 one, one, is... Yeah. Remember, both these players are on one base, so it's not like... Oh, no, it's not going to be Colossus. Huh. Twilight counts against plays. Wow. So what do you think this could be, Frodan? Uh, well, he does have a couple options. He, I think he, he knows the 1-1-1's one, one, coming, right? I think he's got a good scout yeah. of everything. He saw the Hellions. I don't think he saw anything else, but that's all he needs to see. And with that, he might want to get charge out really quick to make sure to meet any of the tank's marines. Uh, but he still needs an answer. Oh, it's going to gonna be uh, blank. Oh, yeah, he also could get, could get blank, yeah. but I think Just charge is better. The amount what? of stalkers that he's Wait, so what? <laughs> he cancels his Twilight Council. Super mind games, immortal. man. Huh? He's mind gaming us, man. He's mind gaming the casters and Thorzane because uh, he's well, canceling things. Thorzane didn't see the Twilight Council. So Did he, he? Oh, he didn't. He can't mind game us. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, he, wow. He's just... Uh, I am so perplexed. Uh, I, I, you know, I couldn't actually tell you what, what was going on right now. Um, But... We do see the Banshee is making his way to the top right half of the map. Now, this Observer will be very key in terms of scouting out his opponent's composition as well as the location, but uh, he's going to have to have something to deal with the pros back home. Oh, sorry, the Banshee back at home because you can't lose too many pros here. As you can see, I mean, Cloak isn't anywhere near done. Um, he hasn't actually started it. <laughs> That's how so far away it is from being done. It hasn't even Yeah, I know. So he doesn't have to worry about something like that. But I like that because... It forces a lot of observers out for Cruncher, and also puts Stalkers in very un uncomfortable positions. Mm. So uh, it, it's a win-win scenario. The two Banshees will meet up over here, one in the top left, one in the top right. And as you can see, the Stalkers, everything is just receded so far back, it's like watching Mr. Bitter's hairline. Whoa! BM? 2 Got BM? Him. Too harsh? That was, uh, that, was, that was a little harsh, but... <laughs> not not as harsh as Thorzane's going to put on the punishment for Cruncher unless Cruncher does something drastic. You can see he's getting a Twilight Council again anyways. And now the Twilight Council is finished. What are you going to do with your Cruncher? You have so many Stalkers. I would not be surprised if you go for Link. Or, or you can go for another DT Shrine in the tent. But he might not have the opportunity to really capitalize on that as Thorzane's moving out to the middle of the map. Here we go. Stalkers are going to try to <laughs> kite as best as possible. But I don't think there's a lot of capabilities with this. Charge is being researched, so you're absolutely right. He is going to charge just three minutes later. He's got one Zealot, though, so he's going to need a lot more Zealots if he wants to make use of charge. As you can see, Ooh. that Thorzane doesn't want to lose those Banshees. Now, he does have a Raven, which throws a lot of uh, funky things in the mix, especially with their PDD uh -oh. really oh, capitalizing Banshee. on it. Hmm. Poor Banshee. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. But uh, we, now we see that Thorzane, I mean, he's still gassing up back at home, and I guess he's just fainting pressure, but why is Cruncher moving up really forward? He can't actually attack into this. Well, he's trying to have as many cutting opportunities as possible, and ah. if, if Thorzane ever gets out of position, he loses one of his siege tanks, he's great. If he has to throw down the PDD, then obviously that whole Raven investment is completely worthless. Uh, Ravens are actually a very, very burst-style defend the defense right is that right yeah yeah they um, defend against burst damage yeah so and, and that's exactly what you know the 111 is um, it, it's really good at taking a position and oh just yeah. denying it from your opponent you're so. talking about position point defense drone is fantastic against that that is and uh yeah. it's also really good because i mean last time cruncher tried to go dt of course he never really had an opportunity to capitalize on that but uh, Thorzane just having that extra security is fantastic. You can see the Cruncher is getting more gates. His Temple Archives has finished. And if he's going to go for a Charge Archon timing, he's going to warp in a lot uh, in the next coming moments. In fact, he doesn't have even gases number three and four, so he's not going to have that many Archons. Maybe two at most. This might be really good. As we can see, plus one weapons attack is being upgraded, so is plus one armor. So there's a lot of minerals and gas being allocated over there. Stim's not done. Stim isn't finished. Now, if Stim finishes, that'll be really tough for Cruncher. I don't know if he can continue on like that, but he needs to attack in you know, the coming seconds or else he's in a lot of trouble here. He's got 40 seconds on the clock. 
and uh, every second is going to matter, especially because Cruncher is warping in right here, and he's going to try to see if he can auto go to turret first. Nice auto turrets. Wow, auto turrets to absorb a lot of the charge damage initially. The, the tanks are clumped up. The Immortal is trying to target them. Thor's ain't falling back. He doesn't have stim yet, so a fantastic point for oh, Cruncher to attack. Man. But the Banshees back at the main are killing a lot of stuff. Cruncher warping in units, but they are going to drop extremely quickly. Cruncher's going to go back to the natural as well, trying to go for another attack, but he doesn't have a lot of charge off the tank, so his Archons and Immortals are very vulnerable, a massive stim, and Thorzian's going to stutter step his way into the army, very confident his ability to take it on. GG comes out of Cruncher. Thorzian with a well-executed attack and defense, able to take out Cruncher 2-0. And a very convincing victory. Auto turrets were key there, burning the charge really and also cool. making it so that the siege tanks do not attack their own units. Uh, so him dropping that into the PDD was so instrumental in defending that. I think even without it, he might have had enough to actually defend it as well. But very well played by Thorzain. Cruncher showed no chance, I think, overall in that series. Yeah, I think uh, Cruncher used, I mean, it, it just kind of boils down to things out of Let's take a closer look at the actual battle. The PDD and the, the auto turrets were clutched, just like you said. And Thorzain showing patience, knew, knowing when to give it the tanks, waiting for uh, his stim to finish. Of course, those timings were very key, but also s pressuring the warpins back at home, so that way the push, the, the second push, won't be as strong. And again, Cruncher pushing in here once again had nothing really to tank against the onslaught of Marines with stim finishing. And that was even without plus one, plus one. Yeah, they were <laughs> just about to finish. So how advantageous for Thorzain, he seemed to play that very easily and took the win in game number two on Shattered Temple. So congratulations to him. He'll take another win here in the North American Star League. Another $150 goes to the prize purse of, of Thorzain. Uh, Thorze. And Thorzain moves up in division accordingly yep. after a very much needed win. We want to thank the sponsor of the game, Game Minder. Uh, thank you so much for sponsoring NSL Season 3. Make sure to get Game Minder, the free smartphone application to let you know about upcoming NSL broadcasts as well as game demos.